I know you want to start, um, you know, uh, how are you processing just the fact that right now it looks like maybe you're not starting? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just all about going in um, each day and just uh, keep me head down and working. You know what I mean? Um, make the main thing the main thing. You know what I mean? Just um, me do my work. They do their work, you know. Just have fun. Compete. Just me being at Bama, you know what I mean? All that good stuff. Um, I'm no stranger to uh, competition, so uh, I know exactly how to handle it. On the Raiders Rundown, we are going to talk about Alex Leatherwood and the right tackle position battle for the Las Vegas Raiders. We're also going to talk about Derek Carr, his connection to Devontae Adams and other receivers on the field. We're going to give an update on who's missing at practice and what you could potentially see in this preseason game. All this and more will be discussed on the Raiders Rundown, so make sure you like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to the Raiders Rundown for more Las Vegas Raiders content. Now, Alex Leatherwood looked a little pissed off in the press conference you got reports from numerous people talking about how he looked disheveled and how he was not getting first team reps at practice today and that is Saturday July 30th now this is pretty interesting because you would think that he would automatically be the starter in a lot of ways because he was drafted in the first round by John Gruden and Mike Mayock in the 2021 draft however I think things have become more complicated when you see Brandon Parker and his demeanor at the previous press conference contrasted with how Alex Leatherwood looked today at this press conference, you gotta you gotta say that Brandon Parker looks more confident, more like a veteran, and like he is more sure of his spot on this roster as opposed to Alex Leatherwood. Now, Alex Leatherwood, by some reports, you do have people like Tashawn Reed saying that he's always been a monotone guy, and that is true. Uh, but really, I mean, he's in a tough spot. How do you expect him to act? Obviously, he's not gonna openly say, Oh, I'm pissed off that I'm not getting all the first team reps, but hey. It's going to be an interesting preseason with the offensive line. Who is going to come out on top? And hopefully it's Alex Leatherwood because we've already invested a lot in him. But it's great to have Brandon Parker, a guy who seems really confident and really happy about his position on the team right now. And to Sean Reed of The Athletic talking about the offensive lineup that he saw at training camp today, saying that Alex Leatherwood and Dylan Parham are competing for starting roles while everything else is sort of settled. Left tackle Colt Miller, John Simpson, Looking really confident as well. Left guard, Andre James, obviously got that fat contract a couple years ago. He's solidified as the starting center. And then you have Lester Cotton Sr. along with Brandon Parker. Interesting to see. Lester Cotton Sr. and what Derek Carr had to say about Lester Cotton Sr. and the rest of the offensive line at the press conference today. Yeah, I'm so, you know, Paul, I'm so proud of Lester. Yeah, he, how I say, when he first came in, one of the first questions he asked me, he says, what do I need to do to be your starting guard? That's what he asked me, you know. And I was like, this is, what a question, you know. And I said, man, just keep, keep, keep working your butt off. At the time, you could look back and see who we had there and things like that. It was going to be hard for him. But I, I told Lester when we were walking to our car the other day, I said, Lester, I'm so proud of you because through the cuts, through the re-signs, through the this, through the that, all this kind of new schemes, all, you have done nothing but put your head down. You've been in there with AJ, AJ Nibel. You've worked your butt off and now you're getting reps and all these kind of things. And, and I said, you look, you look good, man. You're doing, you're doing some good things. And so I don't know, you know, where he's at with everything, like as Carm would know or we can't, or Josh would know. Um, but I can tell you just just how proud of him I am. You know, hopefully that show like says, you know, what I'm trying to say, what I see about him, you know, how how much he's come from from when I first saw him. So Lester Cotton Sr. has an interesting role here. You know, he's a guy who's had to fight it out and battle it out to get where he is today. Not automatically a starter, was on the practice squad in 2019 with the Raiders and it's kind of just hung around on the roster, on off the roster, on the roster, off the roster. And it's really cool, like Derek Carr is saying, to see him kind of flourish in this moment and perhaps be able to take advantage of this moment, this guy getting this opportunity here that he's worked so hard for. And you see a lot of people, once they, once they become on the practice squad, you know, they're not drafted that highly, you know, everything kind of goes downhill and it's really interesting and special to see that moment when someone rises and, and really um, is able to handle the challenge. And it is a cha challenge going from practice squad to a starter in the NFL, no matter what position you're in. Now, your boy, Q and Willie G. Ramirez, according to Vincent Bosignor of the Las Vegas Review Journal, talked about how Alex Leatherwood seemed dejected when he spoke to them at the press conference today. Uh, there were periods of time, this is really interesting, that he was working with the third team. Now, originally we had heard, you know, first team, second team switching off of Brandon Parker. Then it became, you know, Thayer Mumford getting some more reps and whatnot. And now in the third 
weird team. That's really tough for him. It's going to be difficult to see what happens. But hey, maybe this is a psychological trick by offensive line coach Brasillo and Josh McDaniels. Maybe they're trying to fire Alex Leatherwood up. Make, you know, make him take some reps with the third team, second team. Have him start thinking like, yo, what's going on? I was just taking reps with the first team. I, I, I need to step it up a notch. And hopefully, you know, Leatherwood sees this as an opportunity to motivate uh, himself. And your boy Q of the Locked On podcast, Locked On Raiders, saying that he believes in his view that uh, Leatherwood's body language and tone told a different story, not in good spirits after being in second and third team. I I, I have to say, I somewhat disagree. I, I, I kind of agree more with Tashawn Reed of The Athletic. I think Leatherwood has always kind of had the, I guess, monotone, you know, solemn style of speaking in the press conference. He's not Denzel Perry, man. Like, he's not going to be like that in the press conference, right? So, you know, he's still a young player, too. I mean, he, he could really... Hey, what if Brandon Parker starts this year? There's no saying that Leatherwood can't turn it around next year. You know, he's in the second year of his four-year rookie contract. You also have the fifth-year option because he is a first-round pick. So potentially he has three more years on this team. Uh, enough time for somebody like Coach Priscillo and Josh McDaniels to develop this guy. Thayer Mumford from Ohio State, drafted in the seventh round by the Las Vegas Raiders this past year was getting some reps in first and second team. And like I said, I don't know if this is a psychological trick to kind of motivate Leatherwood because, look, I, you know, I, I would be surprised if they are Mumford starts at right tackle. I really do think it's Brandon Parker's job to lose at this point. And the fact that they are Mumford was drafted in the seventh round. Look, these GMs are not stupid. There's not 31 other GMs in the NFL that are stupid. They know what they're doing. They know how to evaluate players. And if he's drafted in the seventh round, it's because he's not a, he's not a starter year one in the mind of the NFL, in the mind of the NFL. Now, hey, if this guy wants to come out here and shock the world and straight up start for the, for the Raiders, beat out Parker, beat out Alex Leatherwood, hey, I'm all for surprises and I and I love stories like that. So hey, hopefully that's the case. But I I would I would be surprised to, to see that happen. But interesting that he got those first team reps and look preseason. It's going to be the right. Look, like, my eyes are going to be locked in on the right tackle position during preseason. That's that's what I'm going to be looking at this whole entire time. Who's giving up some pressure? You know, who, who's able to handle these blocks? And who's able to get that push in the run game? Because that's what really matters on the right side. For the majority of times, typically teams do run, you know, to, to that to that right side. So we'll see what happens there. Now, there were some people missing from practice. Deshaun Reed of The Athletic is noting about this. Britton Brown, the, the running back, drafted late in the seventh round as well. Wasn't at practice, and we haven't heard much about this guy all through training camp as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going on with him. You know, is 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 he ready to play? Because look, Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake, uh, Kenyon Drake, uh, Kenyon Drake. Yeah, sometimes I get Jake and Drake, and Drake and Josh. You know, I get that all messed up. Either way, Jacobs and Drake and Brandon Bolden are probably, obviously, not going to play in that preseason game, the Hall of Fame game. We need Zamir White. You know, unfortunately, Zamir White is back at practice. Tashawn Reed w was noting that as well. So fortunately, he's back. But Chandler Jones has not been around for two days. He's missed two practices, had the day off, obviously. But, I mean, hopefully this guy is healthy. Hopefully he just knows the scheme and maybe they want to get some other players some reps. Kyler Fackrell, who was originally supposed to be a backup uh, for perhaps Chandler Jones and Max Crosby, to Sean Reed saying that he was in line to be, you know, the, the backup after them, has, has become injured and is now on IR and going to miss the rest of the season. This does open up an opportunity, as to Sean Reed has noted, for Cleland Farrell and Malcolm Kuntz. Malcolm Kuntz, man, drafted pretty high, your third round pick, right? I mean, this guy has an opportunity as well now that Kyler Fackrell has gone down, and that sucks for Kyler Fackrell. I hope him and his family are okay, and I hope he's able to bounce back back uh, from this and that really sucks especially when injuries hold someone back it's not talent that's just tough for me to see man that really is but teamer uh phillips Farrell, J handler jones and the, and that's the big one now that fact rolls out we got chandler jones and cleveland Farrell not at practice cleveland Farrell's in a tough spot i mean it's you know it's an open question as to, you know, if, is he going to really even make the roster at this point? Who, who knows? I mean, could, could he get traded? I, I don't know. But I think now that fackrell has gone, perhaps he has a better opportunity to stay on this roster. Or perhaps it's just going to open up an opportunity for Malcolm Coons. But this is tough to see. And Roderick Teamer still hasn't been back on the field since that collision with Jonathan Abram. Jonathan Abram has been doing really well in camp uh, from all these reporters. That's what they've been saying. But you can't have these collisions where you're hurting players. 
players, and we've seen it happen with Conley uh, back in the day a few years ago. The, 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 it, you just can't hurt your own teammates, right? And it sucks to see Roderick Teamer not out there right now, but hopefully this guy can come back. Zamir White is another guy who is back, and it's great to see him back because we're going to need a running back to, to play in this preseason game, and from what I know, it doesn't seem like we have too many. It doesn't seem like we have too many, uh, especially given the fact that you know, Zamir White's been banged up. Britton Brown hasn't been at practice as well. So we'll see what happens there. But probably going to run the ball a lot. Probably going to run the ball a lot in preseason. Preseason, you typically don't see too much passing going on. It's actually going to be interesting as well to see who's going to be the number two QB. Jarrett Stidham does have the upper hand, but you can't immediately just say, oh, it's, it's, it's Stidham's job. Nick Mullins is not going to go down quietly, and I'm interested to see what he does. And I'm also really interested in our wide receivers, because there's been reports by Levi Edwards, who works for the Raiders media team, that Derek Carr was dealing, you know, and he was straight lighting up the field. He was straight throwing dots, right? Derek Carr uh, doing a great job at practice and also hyping up some of his other wide receivers. You know, Keelan has really impressed me uh, with, uh, you know, his ability to turn in the, in the air, to make catches, his ability on the sideline. He's really good. You know, there's never a doubt if he's in or out. Like he just, some guys have a natural feel of where they're at on the field. He runs some really crisp route. Uh, Robinson has done, you know, he's flashed that talent, you know, that speed that we've seen, you know, happen against us, you know, uh, for, for a few years. And, you know, he's flashed those same things here, that ability uh, to be, you know, someone that can stretch the field and also run the intermediate to short stuff and, you know, make something happen after and uh yeah, mac he's someone that he does everything you know he's a big body uh, obviously he's he's made a great career and you know, you know playing some special teams things and being able to play all the positions at receiver interesting to note demarcus robinson Derek carr harped on his speed talked about his speed and his after the catch ability one thing about demarcus robinson is his 40 yard dash actually isn't that fast it's in the 4.5s however you've seen this time and time again on the chiefs the dude is able to make plays after the catch really interesting to see what we can do with him get him in get him in some short yarded situations maybe some drag routes and see what he could do on the field and Keelan Cole Derek Carr is also hyping up this guy along with Mac Hollins who I think is probably going to win that starting outside wide receiver job but this is great to see that we have such a plethora of weapons outside of Devonte Adams and Hunter Renfro because you know got Lord forbid anything happened to them. That would, that would suck. But it seems like we have some great weapons, great security. And a lot of, and these three guys are all people who are not too old and not too young. You still got that veteran experience, but you also still have that athleticism. They're not quite deep into their age as a wide receiver. And it's funny to say, you know, people getting old and whatnot, because, you know, being close to 30 is not old at all as, as someone in my age group. But Derek Carr was also asked today about Kyler Murray and if he watches a lot of film. Just- for yeah. you personally, yeah. when you watch game film from in a seven-day period, how many hours do you put <laughs> I knew that question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my wife was counting the other day. She was like, you know, you, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. I don't even want to look. I, again, I hope Kyler's doing great myself. I watch a lot of film. Yeah, I'm leaving it at that. I was <laughs> leaving it at that. In case you don't know, there was a clause in Kyler Murray's contract where it had to force him to watch four hours of film every week, which is pretty sad, dude. You got to do your job. What the hell is going on? And guess what? I believe Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk that unless Kyler Murray already watched that much film, they wouldn't have had to put it in the contract. So he's clearly not watching that much film. And it just makes me grateful that we have a QB like Derek Carr, who, according to him and according to his wife, Heather, he watches way too much film, if anything. We got the former Raider, former Packer, James Jones, hanging out at practice with Edgar Bennett, the wide receiver coach, who was also the wide receiver coach in Green Bay when James Jones was there, along with Devontae Adams. And he was also the wide receiver coach while John Gruden was the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders just recently prior to Josh McDaniels. So there's a connection and a history here between these three men, and it's great to see this happen again, seeing them all able to connect on the field and James Jones is stoked. He's just hyping up the Raiders. And, you know, I don't know. He re- I think he retired a Packer because he only played with the Raiders one year. But the Raiders are clearly the more exciting team these days. I mean, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, it's just sad. You don't know who the hell he's going to throw to. Watson or Romeo Dubs, who knows? But James Jones also hyping up the Las Vegas Raiders and Devontae Adams on Twitter today saying that he hey, he predicts 2,000 yards. Hey, if, 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 I hope he's being serious and this isn't cap because if you're going to tell me Devontae Adams gets 2,000 yards. I know who I'm drafting number one in fantasy football this year. That's for sure. Especially if it's a points per reception league. Hey, that's awesome to see. 2K yards, 
for Devontae Adams. And hey, another thing I want to talk about, uh, first of all, and I haven't said this yet, is a uh, to make sure you like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to this channel for more Raiders content. And also, if you want to save money on Raiders tickets, use my promo code Wi-Fi Willie at SeatGeek, SeatGeek.com. Save 20 bucks on tickets to anything with promo code Wi-Fi Willie. Another thing I want to talk about is Mo Hurst. And Mo Hurst was doing really well with the 49ers. He's a former draft pick by the Oakland Raiders in 2018. Played with us in 18 and 2019. And I know he's no longer on the team anymore, but like I said, my heart goes out to players when when injuries really set them back and I think that's really tough uh, to see and he tore his bicep today he was in line to start for the 49ers um and and, and it just sucks it just sucks he's gonna have to get surgery and whatnot and and I thought Mo Hurst did really well in 2018 and 2019 unfortunately it just didn't work out with the Raiders but tough to see that and uh you know give a shout out to Mo Hurst once a Raider always a Raider and it sucks that he went down like that by the way Thank you guys for watching this video and subscribe if you want more Raiders content. Peace out and I hope you have a good one.